members. So we're back again with another video today. As you can see behind me, we got a 2012 commercial Dodge Sprinter van. So this is for a local customer who called in and stated that their van would intermittently start and they're not very sure what the problem could be. They initially requested us to do a new key for the van, but based on our experience, we know that these keys are very, very reliable and do not fail very easily. And so we recommended the customer to try and start the vehicle at least once and bring it into the facility for us to diagnose and find where the problem lies and that's what we're gonna do today now before heading into that I wanted to give you an idea of what this system is because even though it is a Dodge Sprinter it actually uses the Mercedes EIS ESL system similar to the other Mercedes with the IR key that you're familiar with. So it's very similar to this module right here, but instead of having the IR key to operate the ignition switch, it actually uses a transponder chip. And this one is from another vehicle where you have the IR interface, whereas we're gonna show you later on for the Dodge Sprinter, it's pretty much like a mechanical keyhole that goes in, but there is no wafers in there. It's pretty much empty. How the system works, just illustrating it with this one here, is when the key goes in, it actually activates the ignition switch and reads the transponder chip. Once the EIS recognizes the key, it will send the signal to the steering lock to allow it to unlock. Once the steering lock is unlocked, which releases the steering, it will send a signal back to the ignition switch telling it, hey, I'm unlocked. You can allow the key to turn and start. So what the customer was having an issue with was every time he puts the key in, it would not allow him to turn the ignition switch. Now, one other symptom that could tell you that it could be potentially the steering lock is the fact that the steering wheel was always unlocked. So even though the key was in the off position and the key was out, his steering wheel was still turning while the vehicle was off. So that pretty much tells you that the steering lock failed and the motor in there was not able to bring it back to the default position of locking state. So based on that, we decided, hey, let's do some more testing and confirm that it is the steering lock before doing anything else. Now, sometimes it could be the ignition switch itself. And so what we recommend technicians out there or car owners or commercial truck owners is to have one of these immobilizer test ringers. We sell them at vpro.ca. It costs $20 and can save you a lot of headache. We're gonna show you how that works, but pretty much just to explain to you, you would pretty much put this around any ignition that actually uses an antenna with a transponder and you would insert the key in and turn and see if it lights up, which would pretty much confirm to you that the ignition switch is powering on and it's trying to communicate with the key. But if you actually insert the key and no light comes on, or if you turn in some cases for the light to turn on and no light comes on, then that means that this is dead. Now it could potentially be there's no power of ground going to the module, so it could be a wiring issue, it could be a fuse, or it could be the module itself is bad. And so we're gonna demonstrate here how to use this immobilizer test ringer. We're gonna also show you a bypass steering lock module that we sell and we've mentioned before vpro.ca and this applies to several Mercedes chassis from Sprinter vehicles to Crafter to W169 chassis 245 202 208 210 211 639 and 906 and what's nice is it can only go in one way so even though it actually covers more than five six different models of ignition switches it only goes in one way so this one cost a hundred dollars and it's plug and play you do not need to program it and so we're gonna show you how that's connected onto the Sprinter momentarily. All right, so here we are inside the Dodge Sprinter. As we mentioned earlier, if you can see onto the ignition switch, there is a keyhole, and that's what's different than the traditional Mercedes EIS IR interface. So when you put the key in, pretty much in this case, doesn't allow us to turn. And so this is where we're trying to figure out where the potential problem is. And the first thing we do is we wanna know if the actual module is powered up and doing its job by attempting to read the key information. So again, we have the immobilizer test ring and we're gonna show you how this is used. And this applies to any ignition module that has a transponder system or IR system as well. So all you gotta do is put it 
around the ignition and you insert and as you saw the light actually lit up which tells us that the electronic ignition switch is powered up and attempting to read the key so i'm going to try that again and there you have it so we just confirmed that the electronic ignition switch is operating now another thing that we actually did earlier is we have a key reader and we confirmed that the key was working fine meaning we confirmed that the transponder inside the key was reading proper information. So now that we know the key is fine, we just confirmed that the electronic ignition switch is at least powering up. We still don't know if it's actually doing its job, but it's, it's at least powering up. So we don't have to look into the wiring for power ground or anything else of that nature. What's nice about having this is you're able to disconnect the steering lock, connect it to this module and see if it fires up. If it does fire up, then pretty much it tells you right away that it was the electronic steering lock from the beginning that was the cause of the problem so we're going to show you next how that's done all right so where the electronic steering lock is located is pretty much connected to the steering column shaft and if you come down here it's exposed fairly easily right there you can see i'm going to point it out this is the plug for it and that is the electronic steering lock and so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to unplug it we're going to bring our v pro esl bypass emulator we're going to look at the different tabs and see where it would align properly here and again it would only go one way so uh, you're never going to mistaken where it goes in if it doesn't go in then you know that you're not in the right location so i just figured it would be not here not here oh so i turn it around there's another one here there we go connected you can see here we have the red light so what i'm going to do right now is i am going to insert the key and see if we get the green light there we go. We got the green light on the bypass emulator, which means that it got the signal from the electronic ignition switch and it sent it back to the EIS. And I actually just heard a click on the EIS, which means it released the key. Let's try to hear that again close to the EIS. All right, so as we showed you here, after connecting the bypass emulator, which is currently the case, and we inserted the key, we hear the release from the ignition switch, allows us to turn turns on the lights on the instrument cluster and there's a very good chance this van is going to crank and start there you have it as you saw today we managed to isolate the problem through using the bypass emulator now we're going to show you if you actually have a diagnostic tool what error code to look at also to confirm where the problem might be we'll show you that next all right so we have our autel ms909 diagnostic tool again we are an official distributor of autel so if you do need these devices contact us and we will give you a special rate and so here is where the obd connector is for these device printers bottom left there's a tab that you twist and turn drops it down there's another flap here that you bring down you got the obd port there so what we're going to do is we're going to connect our VCI interface in to read the codes. It's going to take a minute for this device to load up and to sync up with the main tablet. And we're going to show you momentarily the codes. All right, so now we're going to select the vehicle here. I'm going to go under Europe. You have two options of Mercedes. This is typically the regular vehicles. This includes commercial. So we're going to go Mercedes-Benz LD. We're going to go standalone diagnostics. Manual selection because it's not going to detect the VIN. And you can see here, these are all the various commercial Mercedes vehicles. So we're going to go Sprinter because the other Sprinter is 2013 plus. So we're going to go Sprinter. In our case, it's 2012. And again, ours is a 2012. So you can see the first one is a 906. And that's the electronic ignition switch type and uh, chassis model. So we're going to select that. That's a 906 diesel. Okay. And again, it's always best to turn on the hazard light just to wake up the system for proper communication. All right, so it connected through. In our case, we're gonna do an auto scan and see which modules it can actually connect in the off position. And so one thing to keep in mind is there's gonna be a lot of modules that it's not gonna connect to because the vehicle is in the off position. But the idea is if we can communicate to the electronic ignition switch, which in this case, it's right here. EZS or EIS. So this is gonna take some time going through the various modules. So we're gonna come back once we finish the scan. All right, so complete scanning the modules. And as you can see here, as mentioned earlier, a lot of the control modules cannot communicate with, so it says no response. However, the electronic ignition switch 
as three faults. And you can see here that it actually is alluding to the fact that the steering log limit switch is faulty. All right, so we connected the bypass module, vehicle starts. The next thing we do is we use the diagnostic tool to make sure that that 9004 DTC related to the steering lock is gone. We clear the codes and complete the job. So back to the tablet here, we're gonna do a quick erase in the on position. So we put the key in, on position, quick erase. Now do keep in mind that it's gonna only erase the modules that it was originally able to connect to and the other ones that there's no response it will not even look into that so in order to actually look into the other modules we're going to need to do another scan but in our case we're just focusing on the EIS because that's what we're concerned with so as you can see it's all passed so to rerun the system test or for the vehicle to rerun its own system test we turn it off and then turn it back on and we're going to scan specifically the ignition switch only to make sure that DTC 9004 has been eliminated. So right here, we're connected. We go into trouble codes. And as you can see, there's no trouble code detected. So that pretty much confirmed the problem. And now the vehicle will always start and it will never shut down related to the steering lock. Now, what we recommend is to actually remove the mechanical steering lock system there just for safety purposes. And keep in mind the advantage of using a bypass module is not to worry about this failure ever again because the original electronic steering lock uses a motor in there. That motor through long usage and through time it stops working and gets weaker. So that's what we do is by bypassing the module we're able to guarantee this lifetime. But keep in mind is when you use that solution the steering wheel will always be in the unlocked position and will never be locked. So that's another compromise you need to keep in mind and something to also let your customers be aware of so that they're aware of what they're receiving and also advise the customers or if it's your own truck I suggest also bringing this up to your insurance company so that they're aware that way if anything ever to happen they are aware that this was installed in there to solve the original problem and no future headache all right so as you can see here we're going to do one final test make sure everything is working put the key in hear the EIS release on position you hear the fuel pump priming there you have it all good to go no lights on the dash saving customer a lot of time and money with the solution all right so pretty much in this video we went through the whole process of diagnosing this dot sprinter 2012 and we concluded that the electronic steering log was the problem and just to let you know at vpro we do sell the bypass module this is a plug and play for several mercedes modules that have this common failure so you can visit www.vpro.ca to buy this from us we also use the mobilizer antenna tester and this is also available we're gonna add all the links in the description and this test to make sure that the ignition antenna is working and we also are an official distributor of Autel devices and today we did use the MS909 diagnostic tool to connect to the dot sprinter and the nice thing about this is it has the new topology tree when scanning all the various vehicles and uh, that's pretty helpful so hopefully you learned something here today and do visit also our new V Pro Academy where we have classes we're adding new instructors in there and we have a variety of different offerings for you to improve your knowledge base in the automotive electronic field. So don't forget to sign up there. And as always, hope you learned something. And until next time, take care.